morning, Grace Church. It is a fine day outside, a little cool, but it's better than rain. I spent my first half of my track season in the rain. You know what that does when you don't have any hair? You get to feel a, the wet spot first. All right. I'm also very jealous. I told Sandy earlier, the earlier church service, I was very jealous because I've always wanted to play some kind of an instrument. And in the sixth grade, my parents said, you either play the clarinet or play football. So I decided I want to destroy things, I'll play football. And that, so, but I've always wanted to do that and, and she does a very good job. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, the pew pads that are usually in front, they're normally along the side. Uh, they're stuck in by the hymnals. So make sure you pull those out and put your name and whatever data they need for that, okay? <clears throat> Other announcements. Today is the big day. The big tater day. <laughs> they're having a potato and salad bar in the dining room following the service. The Esther Circle will be hosting it. And the money raised for the mission will be for missions. So don't forget and make an effort to go in there and do that. I'm going to. All right, the second thing, uh, the fish and, uh, the loaves and fishes uh, needs baked spaghetti, salad, garlic bread, and cookies for their April 28th date. Uh, if you're interested in doing that, contact Marlene Stout for more information. I got my little thingy. See this? This is a stuffed animal. Mine's made of my granddaughter. Um, Operations Christmas Child is coming up. And for April, they're collecting stuffed animals like this. They would prefer this size. The bigger sizes don't really fit, though. They fit in the boxes, but then you can't put much more in them. So they prefer to have the little smaller ones. So if you're so inclined, um, <clears throat> make sure that you put the stuffed animals in the boxes. Also, the May collection will be children's Band-Aids, but no cameos. In other words, like camouflage Band-Aids. Apparently, if we send those overseas, it may have an impact on the people and the children there because of, they've been a lot of them been traumatized already. Um, and no fingernail clippers. Okay? No. So there are boxes. Say again? We want fingernail clippers. <laughs> the band aids and fingernail clippers. Oh, yeah, you want the fingernail clippers, yes. <laughs> I read it wrong. I apologize. Knock me out afterwards, okay? Good. All right, so uh, again, there's uh, boxes in the back uh, if you'd like to donate. If you have any questions, talk to Nate. VBS will be Sunday, June 23rd to June 28th at 6 to 8.30 for grades four through six years. Uh, it's gonna be the great jungle journey from Genesis to Revelation, so if you have a Child, grandchild, great grandchild, great great grandchild, great 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 grandchild. Talk to them and get them to come to this. It, it's really a good time. And if you want to volunteer to help, then contact Sarah Runyon and uh, we'll get it right. All right? Uh, if you'd like to donate to BBS, please go to the website that's noted in here and check the church Facebook page. The prayer meeting that you usually have tonight will be after the potato bar in the chapel. So the prayer meeting that Candy operates will be after the, the uh, um, potato bar in the chapel. Um, pantry on Tuesday, Wednesday got for men only, Faithful Friends, Fellowship Bible Music. If you guys are so inclined to sing or make a joyful noise, we'd love to have you in the choir. 
We'd also like to have you in the Bible studies. So uh, those opportunities are there. And then you have a bunch of people on the prayer list. So keep those in mind. Are there any other announcements I may have missed? If not, everybody stand, turn to your neighbor and greet them. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry. <laughs> Pastor Ray mentioned to me, we have a bunch of these um, upper rooms in the back that people are not picking up. Opportunity to use them, they're a great thing. Okay, now you can go greet. <laughs> bulletin to the call of worship. We are still basking in the glory of Christ's Easter victory. O oh Lord, roll away the stones that trap us. Stones of worry, fear, anxiety, and trouble of various sorts. Replace them with the joy of forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, if everyone would turn to him, 133, leaning on the everlasting arms, verses 1 through 3.
welcome to worship. Glad that you're here. And if you're online too, hello to you today. Let's see, as we go to our time of prayer, we do have some great news from Gali Academy Music. Uh, the Madrigals received a superior first place and best overall choir from Music in the Parks Festival. Congratulations. And also their director, the Madrigals director, Matt Lawrence, was recognized as the outstanding soloist at the musical at the Parks Festival. That's Earth. Right. And then also the Gallia Academy High School Band placed superior first place rating during their competition. So, great to celebrate. And uh, family members of the Bobos, uh, David and Carrie Nelson, let's pray for David who is battling uh, stage three colon cancer. Pray for David. Let's see. Also, I got to visit briefly with uh, Ricky Swain earlier in the week. We get to see him again in two weeks. Uh, and he's he and Mary are in the uh, Chillicothe area. Perhaps you have a silent request. You want to be remembered in prayer. If so, just lift a hand. Okay, thanks. Well, let's be in prayer together. Heavenly Father, we seek you today, and we sing your praise, and we want to love on you, Lord. We want to lavish you with love and glory and honor, because it's all due you, Lord. You are the one who provides for us, the one who protects us, the one who makes everything we need, Lord. We are grateful for that. Thank you for the joy, then, of, of worshiping you with your family. We're grateful for brothers and sisters together. And some of your family we're very familiar with, others we're getting to know for the first time. Thank you for new friends, Lord. Thank you for the joy that we have in, in singing your praise and in recalling it and reclaiming it, uh, affirming it, sharing it, and allowing us to uh, realize that it's an experience we have, that our, our Lord is living, our Lord is forgiving, our Lord is loving. We can take advantage of all of that. Lord, as we pray for one another today, uh, we want to lift up, uh, we want to pray for David this day. And in the midst of his battle, Lord, would you be with him? We're praying for the very best, Lord. We want to see recovery. We pray for your presence to be with he and Carrie. Lord, would you also uh, be with Noretta today and be with Chris. We pray for Mike today and we pray for Karen. We lift up uh, Mary to you and we pray for Grady. We also pray for Emily today. Lord, would you be close to Sabrina and Katie? And we pray for Donna. Uh, we pray for Lou today and we pray for Marley. We lift up to you, Chris, today and we pray for Jane. Lord, be close to Cheryl as she continues to recover. And you saw the hands that were raised as well, Lord. You know what's going on in each situation. Thank you that, uh, that we can just think our requests, Lord. We can say them in our minds and you hear. You're aware. And so would you minister? Would you bring your healing touch? Would you bring your comfort? Would you bring you, Lord, your presence into those situations? Again, we give you thanks for this day for the opportunity that we have to sing and to pray and to seek you and to hear from your word, to, to apply it to our lives, Lord. May we go forth today recalling that we are ambassadors for Christ in our schools, in our places of work, and in our homes. We represent you, Lord. And so allow us to bring you honor and glory. We pray all this in the name of Jesus who teaches us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I want to invite Miss Candy and the children to come forward. Miss Candy has a message for you, so meet her at the table. Hello. Do we have any more? No. I don't know. Kingston here? I don't know if he's here. Okay. Well, you two must be the only two. All right. Well, I have a tool here. 
And you know what this tool's for? You ever see one like it? No. No, it's called a level. You want to hold it? Yeah. Yeah. See that water in there? Whatever it is. If you if you move it that way, it goes up. If you move it that way, it goes that way. And you, the what well, the goal is to get it right in the middle. Let's see if this table is level. It's pretty level, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Now some people will say, um, if you tell them something, they'll say, "Are you on the level?" And what that means is, are you telling the truth? Let's see if you're on the level. Ah, oh, you're pretty on the level. Let's see if you're on the level. Yeah, yeah you're pretty good. Okay, that's good. <laughs> you know, um, we always have to tell the truth, don't we? But we always have to know the truth. Somebody else might tell us something, and we got to tell whether they're telling the truth. It would be nice if we could put one of these on their heads, huh? We can't do that. But this is the truth in here, God's Word. And God's Word is always the truth. Here comes Kingston. Hi, Kingston. Can we see if you're level? <laughs> yeah, he's pretty, pretty on the level, too. Okay. You all are good kids. All right, but we always need to read this book because Jesus is always, Jesus is the truth. That's what he tells us. He's the truth. And we can read the Bible and find out the truth. So if somebody's telling you something and you're wondering if it's really the truth, ask your mom and dad too. They know the truth. And look in the Bible. Okay, I got You don't have a Bible at home? You do? Good. No? Don't have one yet? Okay. Would you like to get three pieces out? Don't leave yet. We're going to pray. Okay. <laughs> okay. You get three pieces out? Now, let's pray. Dear Lord, help us always to tell the truth. Help us to know the truth when somebody tells us something. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thank you for coming up. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yeah, okay. Oh. Thanks, Pastor Candy. Let's continue our worship as we present to God our tithes and offerings. Let's start to sing his praise. Heavenly Father, Lord, again, we thank you for the many blessings that you've bestowed on all of us here and, and those out in the, the community and the world, Lord. We're undeserving, but yet you take care of us and you help us. Lord, we ask that you take this offering, these ties, to be used for your glory and to build your kingdom. We will give you all the praise and all the glory. In Christ's name we pray. pray. Amen. Today's scripture reading, ah, excuse me. Everybody turn to page 303, the day of resurrection. You can stay, remain seated. Verses one through th three.
Okay, the scripture reading today will come from Mark 2, 1 through 12. Mark 2, 1 through 12. When he returned to, from, to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door, and he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him, and after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic laid. When Jesus saw that their faith, he said to the paralytic, Child, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts. Why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves. And he said to them, Why do you raise such questions in your heart? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Stand up and take your mat and walk but so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took his mat and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. This is the word of the Lord.
Appreciate the great music today. Well, if you would, find your insert that has the message outline on it, and you can follow right along then. And I want to take a few moments to talk about love bursts. You all have a puzzled look on your face. What's well, love burst? Well, I'm going to tell you about it, all right? You've witnessed a sunburst before, the sunlight kind of shafting through a shadowed forest. And you've seen star bursts with like a light soaring through the night sky. You've heard of power bursts with raw energy booming out of the silence, kind of like when a transformer blows on a utility pole. And I know you've felt love bursts. You may not have called them such, but you've felt them. In fact, I borrowed the term from author and pastor Max Lucado. It's new to me as well. Uh, John Wesley talked about it, but he never used that word either. In fact, this is how he described it. He described it in his journal. John Wesley is the founder of, of the Methodist movement back in the 1700s. And he describes what happened to him at an unlikely Bible study. You can read it with me even. In the evening, I went very unwillingly to a society in Aldersgate Street where one was reading Luther's preface to the epistle to the Romans about a quarter before nine. While he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust Christ, Christ alone for salvation, and an assurance was given to me that he had taken away my sins, mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. John Wesley described it as a heart strangely warmed. I think, I think Max Lucado took that and just said, can we take three words and put it into one? Let's call it a love burst. And that's what we're talking about then today. A heart strangely warmed, a love burst. It's that spontaneous affection, uh, that overwhelming sense of love, an explosion of tenderness, an ignited devotion. And, and it can be spiritual, but it can be other things as well. Let me il illustrate. For you ladies, uh, say you and your husband are at a party. It's one of those at home, uh, stand in the living room and talk parties. And you're chatting with a group of women and the guys are over there in another corner and you see your husband over there. Your topic though with the ladies is husbands. And kind of the collective uh, opinion is negative. Ladies are complaining about the amount of golf and dirty socks and overtime work that the husbands have been putting in. But you're silent. Now, your guy isn't perfect, but he's not a pain either. In fact, when you compare your husband to theirs, your guy is pretty special. And so you look over across the room. You smile at him as he tugs on that tie you forced him to wear that night. And there's still that handsome fellow that stole your heart so many years ago. He's a bit paunchier maybe, and maybe a, bald, maybe a bit balder, but you don't see that. All you see is your man, and you beam at him. That's a love burst. Here's another one for the fellas. Maybe it's been a while since you held a baby, but now you're alone with your grandson. The kids dropped him off for the evening, and your wife had to go out for milk. And now it's just the two of you, and he's just a few weeks old. You cradle him in your arms, and you realize this might be the first time since the hospital that you've had a private moment alone with your grandson. You sit down in your chair with him. You hold him up so you can see his face. And you ponder the future, his future, his first steps, his first kiss, uh, sports or college. And you wonder what it would be like uh, for a world with a kid growing up where hurt seems to linger in every corner. As you look into his eyes and you see his nose, you know, the nose from the other side of the family, it hits you. And out of nowhere, it's like a bolt of devotion. You're suddenly aware that you would do anything for this child. You would do anything to protect this little guy who carries your name. And you pledge to that tiny person, it's going to be all right. And you say, whatever happens, just remember I'm here. It's going to be all right. That's another love burst. Or how about this one? Husband comes home cranky because a deadline at work has been pushed up, and the wife comes home grumpy because the daycare forgot to give your five-year-old daughter her throat medicine. Each of you wants sympathy from the other, but neither gets any. <laughs> and so there you sit at the dinner table, cranky and grumpy, and there's little Sarah, five years old. She folds her hands to pray. You too, you, you bow your heads, but you probably aren't bowing your hearts. But you hear this little prayer, God, it's Sarah. How are you? I'm fine, but mom and dad are mad. 
We've got birds, we've got toys, we've got mashed potatoes, and we got each other. So stop mom and dad from being mad. Please do that, God, or it's just going to be you and me having any fun tonight. Amen. Oh, that prayer, I think, is answered before it's finished, right? Mom and dad both look up in the middle of it, and then they laugh at the end of it and shake their heads, and they both say, I'm sorry. And you both thank God for that little voice that reminded you of what matters. You see, that's what a love burst does. It reminds you of what matters. What matters? It's like that telegram delivered to the back door telling you to treasure the treasure that you've got while you've got it. Perhaps it's an angel's whisper or someone who sounds like an angel <laughs> reminding you that what you have is greater than what you want. Yes, what you have is greater than what you want, reminding you that the urgent is not always the most important. Those are love bursts. I've had them. You've had them, haven't you? And this one may surprise you. Jesus has had them too. One of them happened when Jesus met an invalid. I don't really like that word, do you, invalid? Because you can also pronounce it invalid. And that's not a very good way to look at a person, is it? But this man couldn't walk. His limbs were bent and his body was twisted. And he would sit and watch as people waist high would pass him by. Perhaps he was palsied and maybe he had this disease since he was his birth. We don't know. Maybe as a child, while other kids jumped and ran, he labored just to bring a spoon to his mouth. Maybe he never knew what it was like to be whole. Or maybe he did know. Maybe once he had been healthy, but then was stricken with this disability. Maybe there was a day when he was the fastest kid in school, or maybe the strongest guy in the shop. Well, whether he was born paralyzed or developed this later on, we don't know. But the result was the same. He was dependent on other people for everything. To wash his face, to, to bathe his body, to turn him over, to help make sure there wouldn't be bed sores. And when people looked at him, they didn't see the man. They saw the disability. Invalid. Invalid. What he needed was a new body or a miraculously restored body. And his friends, he had some friends, maybe the only friends in the world he had, they tried to get him some help. See, word got out about Jesus. Jesus had come to town. This craftsman turned teacher turned miracle worker was in town, and people were turning out to see him. Well, by the time the friends with their paralyzed friend got to Jesus, the house was already full. People were jamming the doorways. Kids were sitting in the windowsills. Others were peeking over shoulders. And this man's friends had a choice to make. Wow, look at the crowd. Do we, do we give up or do we try and go in? I mean, who could have faulted them if they turned back? I mean, they did a good deed. They brought their friend there. They had good intentions. They tried. Maybe it just wasn't meant to be. But <laughs> they didn't give up. They didn't give in. In fact, they went through, right? They went through the roof. <laughs> and it was risky. They could fall, or worse, the man could fall. And then taking apart somebody's roof, well, that's downright rude, isn't it? <laughs> and intrusive and antisocial. But faith does those things, doesn't it? You see, faith does the unexpected. If you're filling in your blanks, do that. Faith does the unexpected. And faith gets God's attention. Mark 2, 5 records that when Jesus saw the faith of these people, he said to that paralyzed man, young man, your sins are forgiven. And Jesus experienced a love burst right there. Finally, someone took Jesus at his word. These friends had enough hope in Jesus <laughs> and love for their friend that they took a chance. The stretcher from above was kind of like a sign from above that somebody believes. Someone was willing willing to risk embarrassment and injury and insult for just a few moments to be with Jesus. And Jesus was moved. Like the wife, overwhelmed with love for her paunchy but precious husband. Like the grandfather determined to protect his grandson. Like the parents touched by the prayer of their child. Jesus was moved by this scene of faith. 
And so he applauds, maybe not with his hands, but with his words and his gestures, and he blesses this man. And then we witness another divine love burst, don't we? Now, the friends, the friends of this guy, they, they wanted Jesus to heal their friend. But Jesus wouldn't settle for just a simple physical healing of the body. He wanted to heal the soul. So Jesus momentarily bypasses the physical to deal with the spiritual. You see, the body is temporary, but the soul is eternal. And even though the friends wanted Jesus to give the man a new body so he could walk, Jesus wanted to give him grace and mercy so that the man could live. And sometimes the Lord is so touched by what he sees that he gives us what we need and not simply what we ask for. Did you see that? Sometimes Jesus gives us then what we need and not just what we ask for. And that's a good thing, isn't it? I think it's a very good thing. After all, who would ever think to ask God for what he gives? I mean, who would dare to say, Lord, would you please hang yourself on a tool of torture for me as a substitution for every mistake I've ever made? Or who would have the audacity to, to add to that? And after you forgive me, could you prepare a place for me in, in your house so that I could live there forever? Or who would then even go so far as to say, and then would you please live within me and protect me and guide me and bless me more than I deserve? Wow, who would have the gall to do that? Well, I wouldn't. You wouldn't. These friends didn't. No, like these friends, we ask God for the small stuff. We ask God, give me a nice day. Give me a healthy body. Give me a good job. Help me find my keys, right? And they seem like grand requests from our perspective, but from God's, it's kind of like trying to go down the highway on a skateboard when God wants to provide a Cadillac. <laughs> and so then Jesus, knowing that the disabled man didn't know enough to ask for what he needed, Jesus gave it anyway, and he said, your sins are forgiven. Well, the Pharisees start to grumble, right? Because they always do when it comes to Jesus. That's blasphemy. You can't say things like that. You can't even do that. Only God can forgive sins. And then their complaining spawns Jesus to a great question. Which is easier? Which is easier, to say to this paralyzed man that your sins are forgiven or to tell him to stand up, walk, and, and take your mat and go? Can you answer that question? Which is easier? Maybe we need to ask which is harder to do. To forgive a soul or to heal a body. Which is easier for Jesus? Which would cause Jesus less pain? Providing this man with health or providing this man with heaven? To heal the man's body just sim simply took a command. But to forgive this man's sins took Jesus' blood. The first was done in the house of friends, and the second was done on a hill between two thieves. One took a word, and the other took Jesus' own body. One took a moment, and the other took his life. So which is easier? But so strong was his love for this man and his band of brothers of faith that Jesus went beyond the request, and he went straight to the cross. Jesus knows the cost of grace. Jesus knows what it costs, what the price is for forgiveness. But he offers it anyway. You see, love burst his heart. And by the way, Jesus hasn't changed. What happened then still happens today. When you take a step of faith, Jesus sees it. The same face that beamed at the paralytic beams at the alcoholic who says, I'm going to refuse that drink. The same eyes that took notice of the friends takes notice of a mom and dad who will do anything to get their child to Jesus. The same mouth that spoke the words to the disabled man sp still speak to any person who dares come to Jesus and ask for help. And a burst of love can declare the only words that really matter. The only words that really matter. Your sins are forgiven. Well, as we pray today, I want us to consider that. 
and to maybe seek out Jesus. Would we dare to risk? Because faith risks something sometimes. It says, I don't know if I believe all this, but I'm going to try. I'm going to risk. I'm going to dare. And so as we, as we bow our heads and close our eyes, maybe it's about praying, Lord, I need forgiveness. I, I've had something in my past, and, and yes, I, maybe I've asked for forgiveness a hundred times, and yet it still haunts me, Lord. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I want the assurance that I'm forgiven, Lord. And maybe I'll have to live with the consequences of it forever. Maybe I'll still have the memory of it. But, Lord, I don't want to be haunted by it. Will you forgive me, Lord? Here's my sin. I confess it again. And I'm telling you in this place, not that it's a super special place, but it is a sanctuary. And so, Lord, in this place, I'm telling you, here's my sin. And, and I know you want to forgive me for it. I'm asking you to. I've asked you before. I'm asking again. Lord, I want the assurance that your death on the cross takes care of that. It takes care of my guilt and my shame. Yes, I may have to live with the consequences, but I don't want to be haunted anymore. Or maybe you're praying, Lord, I, I've got this addiction, this thing that keeps me. And I pray and pray about it, Lord. And yet it keeps popping up. Lord, I need power. Power to overcome, power to get beyond. Maybe you're praying for a relationship because there just seems to be a stone wall there. And you're saying, Lord, can this wall come down? Would you help me take, take it down brick by brick? And maybe I'm the one that needs to go forward and ask for forgiveness. Maybe I'm the one who needs to go forward and say, I'm sorry. Help me then, Lord. The relationship is hurting, and, and I'm hurting. And that other person is hurting, Lord. It doesn't have to be that way. Maybe it's something that's not even mentioned. We're just going to take a moment to be quiet and let you talk to God. Jesus, how grateful we are that you still forgive sin, that you still roll away stones, that you want to be here for us, and that we can come to you. Lord, for anybody who's prayed something today, I'm grateful, Lord. I'm grateful they took the risk to seek you. I'm grateful they were willing to confess, willing to admit, willing to say, I need help. And thank you, Jesus. Thank you that when we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins just as your word declares and you cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you then, Lord. We pray for victory in our lives even as we go forward today and tomorrow. Just the, the next day of the week, Lord, help us to be victorious. Again, help us to represent you well. May we be a blessing to somebody else. Lord. Maybe somebody else who's hurting we're being haunted and they maybe not even know why help us to be sensitive to others needs Lord help us to be Jesus for somebody and may you receive all the honor and glory we pray in your name amen well you do need your insert for the last song because we weren't even able to print the words the copyright won't let us do that so you do need your insert for that we weren't it would have found this in our own hymnal. We found it in another. I just love the words to it. It just confirms and what happens when we say yes to Jesus. Heaven comes down. His glory fills our soul. Let's stand to sing.
just think this week you might have the opportunity to provide a love burst for somebody else, to provide that opportunity where their heart is strangely warm. Carry Christ with you, exalt him, stand up high and stand up strong and bold for him and go in his grace, amen. Thank you.